People are slipping away. Economy down. People can't get any pay. But I'm nervous. 
he said, after all of these years of preaching, I said, I'm nervous every time I preach. <laughs> matter, I would be nervous if I wasn't nervous. Um, I want to share a message with you, and I need your prayers because my challenge is to try to condense a 45 minute to 50 minute sermon into 15 or 20. <laughs> Amen. In my meditation preparation for this hour, I contemplated what would I share and I was so led to share a message that many of you perhaps have viewed on our broadcast on Tuesday nights at 10.30 or Wednesday morning at 6.30 a.m. Channel 18, Psalms 23, as it was read by Reverend Mully, I want to tag the text with the title, The Seven Sweet Peas of Psalms 23. After the funeral service of his first wife, Donald Gray Barnhouse, distinguished pastor of the 10th Presbyterian Church in Philadelphia, was trying to think of words to comfort his young children after the loss of their mother. So while trying to conjure up words of comfort, the shadow of a large van passed over the car he was driving on his way home. It was at that moment that those words came to that master illustrator. So quickly he said to his children, children, would you rather be run over by a truck or its shadow? Quickly, the children replied, Dad, that's easy. Of course, we'd rather be run over by the shadow because the shadow cannot harm us. He said, that's exactly right. Over 2,000 years ago, the shadow, the truck of death ran over Jesus so that now only his shadow passes over us. He said, that's what happened to your mother the other day shadow of death passed over her and she's unharmed. She's now safe in heaven. Such is the comforting message of Psalms 23. When you read Psalms 23 unquestionably, it is the most loved psalm of the inspired pen of David. Probably the best known passage of the entire Old Testament. If there is one psalm that has encouraged the hearts of many, it is this beautiful masterpiece, Psalms 23. One historian said of this towering song, it has some courage to the army of the disappointed. This song has poured in some balm and constellation to the heart of the sick. It has ministered to the captives in their dungeons, the widows in their pinching grief, the orphans in their loneliness. The dying soldier had died an easier death as he had the psalm read to him. This psalm has illuminated the hospital of the sick. It has visited the prisoners and broken the prisoners' chains. And through his imagination, like the angel Peter, saw the prisoner back into his home safe again. This psalm has made the, the, the slave freer than his master if he's a Christian. Yes, 